The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. Enter our mansion of mystery, and it's mystery we have in store for you today, in a house nestled in the pleasant English countryside. The house we are to visit is not a brooding castle, nor is it set on one of those windy and cheerless moors that Britain is so famous for. It's a modest two-story cottage, high on a rise that overlooks the tiny hamlet of Salford below. The residents of the town give it a wide berth, even though no one has lived in it for more than two years. And two young men who rented it discovered why. What the devil is that noise, Mark? Well, it sounds as though it's coming from up there. <gasps> Look! I see it, but I don't believe it. mystery drama, The Judge's House, is based on a story by Bram Stoker and was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran. It stars Gordon Gould and Lloyd Batista. I'll return shortly with Act One. Picturesque English country houses have been immortalized in paintings and photographs, particularly in travel posters, luring visitors to jolly old England. Often, though, a house that looks so quaint from the outside can harbor strange vibrations inside, particularly when they take on the characteristics of the owner. Such was the judge's house. But we'll arrive there shortly. Let Mark Mason, a young American in England, Tell us what happened. I often wonder how things might have turned out if I hadn't gone to England that spring of 69. I wouldn't have these nightmares that have haunted me over the years. I went to England at the invitation of Brian Stokes, a fellow I'd met when we were both doing graduate work at Stanford University in California. We planned to write a monograph together on abnormal psychology. And he suggested I join him in England for the two months we thought it would take to write it. We were both filled with excitement the day I arrived at his tiny flat in Liverpool. Mark, it's great to see you again. What a time we'll have. Oh, I can't wait to see the Liverpool sights. Oh, we won't be working here, Mark. Too many distractions. I rented a cottage at Salford. Complete privacy, the agent said. Hasn't been lived in for two years. But he said he'd clean it up a bit. Got it for a song. You look disappointed. Where is the Salford? About a hundred kilometers east of the city. Lovely village. Quiet and remote. Just what we need to work. <laughs> when do we start? We'll motor up Saturday. So that leaves us two days here to make a tourist out of you. Freshen up and we'll take in some of the nightlife you've always been chasing after. There'll be precious little in Salford, I'm afraid. This is it. Charming little place, don't you think? Oh, it's like every picture of an English cottage I've ever seen. <laughs> All it needs is the hollyhocks. A bit early for those yet. I'm dying to see inside. You mean you haven't seen inside? The front was enough to convince me. Besides... The agent assured me it was just what we'd want. Hello. I think that's him coming out the front door. Hello. I see you made it all right. Come on, Mark. Let's go in. You made good time from Liverpool. Didn't expect you till after four. Roads were good. This is my friend from the USA, Mark Mason. Mr. Sheffield. How do you do? <laughs> nice to meet you. Place is all tight and tidy. I had a woman in straightening up the past two days, and I lit a fire for you. Makes things a bit cheery. Very thoughtful. What is that on the roof? A bell tower? Oh, yes. Yes, the bell's still there, as a matter of fact. Here we go now. 
Furniture's a bit stodgy, but serviceable. Ooh, that's some fireplace. Oh, must be eight feet across. Uh, nine, to be exact. I had a good supply of wood put round back. You'll need it. It couldn't be better. When well, look, this must be the bell rope. That's what it is. It's attached through that hole in the ceiling and up to the tower. Well, let's give it a tug. Uh, no, no, don't. Something the matter? It, uh, might startle the village. Oh, is that bad? They're a bit superstitious, you know. The villagers are afraid of this house. At one time, it belonged to a Judge Harrison Schelling. Now, there he is in that portrait over the fireplace. Have you heard of him? Schelling. Schelling. No. Was he famous? Uh, infamous is the word. Oh? He was known as the Hanging Judge. He sent more people to the gallows than any other ten judges put together. Oh, nice guy. He was really hated and feared. The reason I asked you not to ring the bell was because the judge, so the story goes, would ring it on the day of every hanging he ordered. Ugh. He must have been a fiend to take such delight in such a macabre custom. Well, he's not still around, is he? Oh, no, no, no. He died 30 years ago. His son was living here until he died, and now the grandson wants to be rid of the place. Oh, but why are the villagers still on edge? I think very few of them were around when the old boy was <laughs> handing out his hanging orders. Well, that's true, but in these small villages, Mr. Mason, legend dies hard. They all believe the judge's spirit is still here in Salford. If that bell were to ring, well... They might think someone was going to die. Precisely. Well, we won't do anything to increase their fears, like ringing the bell. He's a rather handsome man, don't you think? Hmm. In a stern sort of way, yes. Yeah, it's a good portrait. Done in his robes, seated in a high-backed chair. Ooh, every inch the judge. And those eyes. Well, they pierce right through you. Uh, there's no phone, I'm afraid, but if you want one... You... Not on your life. There's no one we'd want to call, and we don't want to be disturbed. Oh, then I guess that's that. I have your check for the rent, and if there's anything you need, just pop round to my cottage. Yes, thanks very much. We'll freshen up, then walk into the village tonight for a bite. We passed a nice-looking pub on the way up. Oh, yes, Andy Morn's place. Nothing better between Liverpool and Manchester. Decent-looking place. It's terrific. Looks exactly like my idea of an English pub. <laughs> and so it should. That's precisely what it is. Uh, welcome, gents. Uh, table for two right here. Thanks. Bit of a chill tonight. Indeed. Brandy for me. Mm, the same. Uh, were you we wanting to eat? Yes, later. Traveling through, are you? Oh, no. We'll be staying here for a while. We've rented the judge's house. You what? My friend and I are working on a paper together. We'll be living in the judge's house. You are not serious. Oh, we know. The agent told us about... Oh, McKenna. Uh, what does he know? Judge, you mustn't stay up there. Not on your life. Well, the place suits us just fine. What uh, did McKenna tell you? That you all think the judge's spirit haunts the town. Aye, we don't think. We know. I'll be back with your brandy and a jiff and a bit of advice along with it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Everyone's looking at us. Always that way when strangers come in. But I guarantee they'll be staring harder when old Andy tells them what we're up to. Makes it more of an adventure. Flaunting superstition right in their faces. Oh, there you are, boys. Two brandies. Now, if I might just sit down a moment. Uh, listen, I know you don't want to hear this, but... Uh, On the contrary. It makes our position all the more exciting. I wouldn't make light of it, sir. Oh, go ahead. It's true. The old fiend spirit still haunts the hills of self, and we've got proof. Really? It's been no coincidence... That every time there's been a death in Salford for the past two years, since the house was empty, 
The bell in the tower rang. Rang on the day the person died. Before they died. But who'd ring the bell? The judge, lad. The judge. He's still up there. Mark me. Suppose it was the wind swinging the bell. Oh, come on now. What you take me for? There was no wind the first time and any other time. That first day, we all remember it. I'll tell you. One clear morning, the bell starts ringing and ringing. What makes you think it was the judge's ghost? We all ran up to see who was pulling the bell rope. Thought it might be kids on a prank, you know. And you saw the judge? No, 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 no. We peered in the window, and the rope was swinging like mad, and the bell was ringing. But there was nobody in the room. Who else but the ghost of the judge could have been pulling that rope? I tell you, there was no one there. And then someone died? Aye. Oh, Tally. Been sick with pneumonia for two days. Died that night. And then there was Mrs. Allen. Next time the bell rang, she tripped over a cat, hit her head, and uh, that was that. Well, I guess you'd have no reason to lie about it. I suppose this did happen. Four times. Did anyone die without the bell ringing? Not in the past two years. Hmm. Since the judge's son died and left the house empty? Right. Then the bell ringing doesn't really cause the deaths. Of course not. But how does the old monster know when to ring it? Always when someone is going to die. Have you thought about going up and dismantling the bell? Well, that would put an end to it. <laughs> if you could get a man to go near that place. Well, we'll be living there. We'll have a look. You're still going to stay there? After what I just told you? Of course. I can't believe it. Well, it won't hang on my conscience whatever happens to you. You don't want to believe me. It's your business. Mark? Do you think he was pulling our leg about the house? No, he seems serious enough. But it's so far-fetched. Ghosts don't pull bell ropes. And I rather think your theory about the wind might have some substance. Perhaps. But there's a wind tonight and not a sound from the bell. Let's have a look at it from inside. Now? Why not? We have a flash. There must be a way up from the upper floor. All right, why not? There. That small ladder going up to the trap door. That's got to be it. You want to go first? Here goes. The thing's probably rusted shut by now. Hope I can budge it. Any luck? Yes. There it goes. Can you see it? Oh, the bell's enclosed in a housing. Wind couldn't get at it. Not a big one, either. Looks like the dinner bell they used to ring at prep school. Want to take off the rope and give the villagers a break? Should I? Well, maybe not. That we better not. Brian, what are you doing? Stop that thing. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it, Mark. I'm coming down. The damn thing just started clanging. Then someone is down there in the living room, pulling that bell rope. Someone or something is pulling the bell rope. Certainly not one of the villagers who hear the judge's house. Certainly not the judge who sits in his high-backed chair, staring out from his portrait. We'll go downstairs with Mark and Brian to learn just what's going on when I return shortly with Act Two. The bell the old judge used to ring on execution day of victims he had sentenced begins to ring of its own accord, or so it seems, for Brian, who was inspecting it, never touched it. But two educated young men aren't taken in by myths, superstitions, or ghosts. There's a practical explanation for everything. 
Someone's down there pulling on that bell rope. Come on. How did anyone get in? We'll find out. This is as crazy as the story that innkeeper told us. The bell stopped. Look. The rope's still swinging. Well, someone did that, Brian. He's got to be in the house. But where could he go? It only took us moments to come down the stairs. There's no place for anyone to hide. Well, have you got any ideas? No. But the villagers must be having kittens down there. <laughs> you said it. They're wondering who's next. But what the devil is that noise? It sounds as though it's coming from up there. Mark, look. At the hole in the ceiling for the bell rope. I see it, but I don't believe it. A rat. As big as my grandmother's tabby cat. Look at the eyes, Brian. The eyes. It's the firelight hitting them. Could the rat have run up the bell rope? Yes. That's what rang the bell. <laughs> Wait till old Andy and the villagers learn the ghostly bell ringer is nothing but a rat. <laughs> well, I hate the thought of sharing a cottage with that. We shan't. We'll get some poison or a trap in the village tomorrow. You'll need a beaver trap to catch that thing. Oh, it keeps staring at us. Poison will do the trick. Oh, whew. Well, backed away from the hole. <laughs> but it's still up there in the eaves somewhere. Maybe we ought to drive down tonight for the poison. The innkeeper probably has some. We'll do it in the morning. Well, I'm not going to sleep too well with that thing scratching around on the walls. Tomorrow, it'll be dead. That rat just rang its own death knell. Shall we get some work done first? No, let's get into town and get that poison. I'll, I'll work a lot better when we bury that rat. Another drizzly morning. I'll go for the poison. You stay here by the fire. No need for us both to ride down. Well, okay, if you don't mind. I'll put on another pot of coffee. Now bring some fresh eggs from the village. We'll have ourselves a good breakfast and give Mr. Rat his last meal. I watched Brian get into his convertible and swing down the curving road toward the village. I threw another log on the fire. And as I headed for the kitchen to start the coffee, I had the feeling that I was being watched. And I was. I looked up into the eyes of the judge in the portrait. The sensation was incredible. Up to now, I'd only given the portrait a passing glance. But now, the eyes seemed to burn right through me. There was animation in them. They were watching every move I made. I moved closer to the mantel to study the canvas. Here was hate. Revenge and madness rolled into one face. But the eyes... Those incredible eyes. I had to turn away. And when I did, it was only to meet another pair of eyes. The rat was looking down at me from the hole in the ceiling. It sat there, unmoving. As unmoving as the judge in the portrait. Uh, I, I picked up a small log from the hearth. And threw it up at the rat. Oh, I missed. But the rat disappeared into the eaves. And I busied myself in the kitchen until I heard Brian coming in the front door. Hello, Mark? I'm back. In the kitchen. Coffee's ready. I got the rat poison. And a lecture to boot. A lecture? Seems the shopkeeper's as queer about this house as Andy down at the pub. A rat. He says, fat chance. It's the old judge ringing that bell. Did he say anything about the bell ringing last night? Of course. They're all in an uproar. Brian, I want to tell you something. While you were gone, I, I saw the rat again. It looked down at me from that hole up there. Well, this stuff will soon take care of him. As I looked back at it, I saw... I saw the eyes of the judge. What? The eyes of the judge in the portrait. They looked at me with the same intensity as the eyes of the rat. Well, we'll take the portrait down if it bothers you. 
And as for the rat, he's about to have his last meal. Oh, maybe it was being here alone. My, my imagination worked overtime. We'll spread this poison around and get some work done today. May as well start laying out the structure. Where should we put that stuff? Oh, it always seems to appear up by the bell rope. Must have his nest there. We'll put some up there and some in the pantry just in case. I sure hope it works. The chap in the village guaranteed it. Get me that stepladder from the kitchen and I'll sprinkle these pellets in the rafters around the bell rope hole. You better be careful, Brian. Those rats can be vicious. I hope you've got enough of that stuff. We'll soon see. Better take the flash. Yes. Uh, Any sign of Brother Rat? Not so far. No, it's not up here now. What is up there? Just a cramped space between the ceiling and the bedroom floor. There. That does it. Hello. What's this? What did you find? A big book of some kind. Like a scrapbook. Well, bring it down. I intend to. Must have been up there for years. I'm surprised the rat hasn't chewed it to bits and made a nest out of it. Well, it's almost falling apart. Look, we'll lay it out on a long table. Belong to the old judge, without a doubt. Looks like a lot of newspaper articles. The judge's press clippings? Yes. From papers 40 and 50 years old. Look at this. Hanging judge. Sentences 200th to die. He was actually proud of it. So it seems. Hmm. Here's a picture of him. Dated June 19th. 1920. Well, same face as the portrait, only a lot younger. Hello. Here's an odd one. Look at this. The British Society of Sorcery will hold its monthly meeting at Society Headquarters, 31 Pembroke Place, on Thursday, October 1st at 8 p.m. Featured speaker of the evening will be the Honorable Judge Harrison Schelling of Salford, whose topic will be witchcraft and the changing form. The public is invited. Well, now we know his hobby. He gets more fascinating all the time. I might make a hobby of him. What about our monograph? It might tie in nicely. Perfectly. We're doing abnormal psychology. A judge into witchcraft. What a case history. <laughs> I think we've done enough work for one day. You want to go into the village for supper? I'd just as soon heat up some soup here. It's drizzly and cold out there. Suits me. It's almost dark, too. This fire's too good to leave. What was that? What? You didn't hear it? There. Well, something hit the floor. There it is. It's one of the poison pellets. He's pushing them down the hole. The devil! Some guarantee that guy in the village gave you. Look at the fiend. He's throwing the stuff back at us. That's one smart rat. <laughs> he knows what's not good for him. Well, look at it this way. He was here before we were. Maybe we're intruding on him. Why don't we just leave him alone? Let him scrounge around as he pleases. It's been his home for we don't know how long. I don't like that idea at all. But at the moment, I, I don't have a better one. Brian and I had a light supper, did some work, let the fire go to embers and went to bed. I don't know how long I'd been asleep when I heard Brian yelling at me and dragging me out of bed. Mark, the house is on fire. Hurry! What? The downstairs is ablaze. Look! I couldn't see flames, but firelight flickered around the stairwell. I grabbed my pants and we hurried downstairs. What? It's the fireplace. I thought the whole house was ablaze. Yes, it's the fireplace, but how come? They were just dying embers when we went up to bed. But how did this start up? I don't know. Fascinating, isn't it? It's downright weird. Someone started that fire up again. Curious, all right. But I'll be darned if I'll detach a supernatural significance to it. Some charcoal just flared up. I didn't say it was supernatural. I said someone started the fire up. Are you accusing me of playing tricks on you? Don't be ridiculous. 
But you picked a dilly of a house for us to try to concentrate in. Brian's upbeat nature kept me from taking things too seriously. But I should have realized we were in a danger far greater than Brian would admit. For the next two days, we worked without incident. And no sign of the rat, thank heaven. We didn't go into the village at all. And we were surprised when we saw Andy, the tavern keeper, approach the house somewhat cautiously. Come in, Andy. How'd you know it was me? Our crystal ball. What? We saw you through the window. <laughs> I hope I'm not intruding. No, of course not. Help yourself to Sherry. We never thought we'd see you set foot in here. None of us thought I would either. We was getting concerned about you too. Haven't seen you in two days. I was elected to come see you. She was all right. Rather, I lost the draw. And you see, we're fine. Did you get rid of the rat? Well, we don't know. We haven't seen it for two days. I, I knew those pellets would do the trick. We're not sure it ate any of them. Oh? It kept pushing them down at us from its nest. Up there. You don't believe me? I believe anything that might happen in this house. Uh, so that's him. Staring down from the wall. The old hanging judge himself, eh? That's him. Evil as evil can be, he is. You can tell it to look at him. Curious you should put it that way. What way? You said, he is, not he was. Of course he is. He won't believe his spirit's here ringing that bell, but we know it. And mark me, you're in for a hard lesson, don't I know it? We appreciate your concern for our well-being. I mean that. Well, if he was about to come to harm, we wouldn't ignore you. Things are awfully tense in the village. About us? About you. About all of us. That blasted bell rang three nights ago. We know. We're waiting. Wondering. Who's going to be next? <laughs> Do not send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for the judge's next victim. But it's merely a gutter rat that rings the bell when it occasionally runs up and down the bell rope to its nest in the ease. That's what Brian would have the villagers believe, and perhaps he's right. But that's a big perhaps. And we'll find out what really goes on in the judge's house when I return shortly with Act Three. bells. In the silence of the night, how we shiver at the melancholy menace of their tone. The people of Salford certainly shiver every time the bell in the judge's house rings. According to them, it means someone is going to die. But it's been several days now since the bell rang last, and the village is still wondering. Who's going to be next? That's your trouble, Andy. You let superstition color your whole life. No one is going to be next just because a rat happened to swing on a bell rope. Ah, you can talk, lad. You haven't lived in Salford. We know. Well, I'd better be getting back. Well, thanks for coming, Andy. We appreciate your concern. Like I said, we hadn't seen you in two days. Just wanted to make sure you was all right. We still think you're loony. Perhaps. But it will take more than a rat and superstition to get us to leave. Well, I hope for your sake there is nothing more. Good day now. So long, Andy. We'll be down for a beer. And thanks again for thinking of us. You be careful now. <laughs> Decent chap. They all are, I suppose. Yeah. Want to get back to work? We'd better... And thus, then, the psyche is turned inward on itself, with no other outlet. Something the matter, Mark? Uh, 
I just can't concentrate. I know I'm acting like one of the villagers, but I can't stand that portrait staring down at us. It really bothers you. Yes, and I'm going to take it down. All right, if you'll feel better. But he is sort of an inspiration now that we're ready to include him in the paper. Well, give me a hand, will you? Sure. Heavy, is it? Well, it's not that. It, it seems to be nailed to something. It won't budge. So it is. Let's both lift from the bottom. Oh, no use. I'm afraid it's there to stay. Unless we destroy the thing. Oh, no, we can't do that. Well, let's get back to work. I want to go over the scrapbook, item by item. It'll give us a good start on... Hello. Did you move the book? No. It's gone. I mean, I distinctly remember leaving it on the corner table here. Oh, well, it's got to be around here. I never touched it. Nor I. Not since we looked at it the first time. It's absolutely gone. Well, maybe the judge stepped down from the portrait and hid it somewhere. Uh, to keep us from prying. <laughs> now you're treating the whole situation the way you should. But where could it have gone? Let's call it a day. It's getting dark. Want to pop down to Andy's for a pint? I'd like nothing better. Hey, hey, more, boys? Oh, no thanks. I'm falling asleep from all that ale. I'll finish this and we'll go. You know, uh, the people have been talking. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, thinking maybe you lads, loony as you are, have maybe driven the old thing away. Nothing's happened in the village. If you know what I mean. I think we do. You're going to be here for two months. That's good. Just your being there has done something. This is the first time nothing's happened after the bell rang. And we hope it stays that way. We'd better get back. Let's have the tab, Andy. Uh, good night, boys. It's all on me. Oh, I wish we'd left the light on. Take the flash. I'll pop round back for some firewood. You go in and stir the embers. Okay. I went into the living room. And before I could turn on a light, I knew I was being watched. I flicked on the light and... The rat was back. It looked over the rim of the hole. Its eyes aglow with reflected light. Oh, the chill that ran up the back of my neck was indescribable. The rat stared, unmoving, and then it leaped to the bell rope, swinging back and forth, setting off the clanging, twisting and writhing on the rope as it chewed, chewed right through the rope. It fell to the floor with a thud and turned toward me. I raced for the kitchen and slammed the door. I had to get out of the house. I ran through the kitchen to the back door. Oh, but I, I couldn't budge it. Mark, what the devil's going on? Why was the bell ringing? I, I can't open the door, Brian. The rat's in the living room. It's crazed. Open the door. I'll push from this side. Now, now what's happened? Oh, the, the rat's... Loose in the living room. It's it's gone mad or something. It attacked me. Now, now, calm down. Why did the bell ring? The rat chewed through the bell rope. Brian, we, we've got to leave here. The rat clawed at the door. Let's take a look. No. Don't, don't open the door to the living room. It's there. Waiting. Uh, I don't hear anything. Well, it, it's clever. It's waiting for us to come out. I'm going to see... Can you see him? No. Look, look, look at the bottom of the door. Scratch marks. Yes, you're right. I could almost put up with the supernatural aspects you find so exciting. 
But we can't stay with a crazed rat. There's no sign of it now. Come on, let's take a look. Mark, what's the matter? Am I dreaming? Look at the portrait. The portrait? The judge is gone. He's no longer in it. Everything else is there. The chair, the table his arm rested on. Well, this is extraordinary. The painting's completely intact. No smudge, no tears, and no judge. We're getting out of here. I can't leave now. We're experiencing an unbelievable supernatural event. Have you lost your mind? We have both seen with our own eyes a figure disappear from a painting. We both know it's impossible, but it's happened. There's an incredible supernatural force at work in this house. Do you mean the judge is roaming around the house? The image of the judge. Of course. The lecture in the newspaper advertisement. Witchcraft and the changing form. Mark, this adds up. The spirit of the judge never left the house. It stayed here in the form of the rat. Probably several rats over the years. And the body of the judge was preserved in the portrait. It was there for him to claim whenever he wanted. Dressed in his robes. Remember? The eyes of the rat looked like the eyes of the judge in the painting. What an experience we've stumbled on. You mean you're going to stay here? With that crazy judge on the loose? We can't miss out on this. I want to see what he does next. Do you actually think we're going to meet up with him? He's gone from the portrait. He's got to turn up somewhere. Brian, listen to me. That rat attacked me. That means the judge has murder in mind, too. Look, we have got to get out of here. Mark... There he is, at the top of the stairs, looming above us, like some colossus, stood the judge. His black robes swirled around him, his long white hair had a luminous glow, and his eyes, those eyes, over his arm, hung the bell rope, and in his hand, a black cap. As we stood transfixed, slowly he placed the black cap on his head. A cap British judges always put on when passing a sentence of death. The death cap. Incredible. What a manifestation. It He's beckoning to us. I'm going up. No, Brian, you can't. It's only an ectoplasmic manifestation, a spirit. I want to see what it does. It can't hurt us. Let's just leave. Never. See, it's motioning us to follow. I'm going to follow it. Don't. I'm going to see this through. It's moving away. Down the hall. I must see where it goes. And what it does. Brian... Please, don't go up there. It's heading for the bell tower. I'm close enough to touch it. Brian. Brian. Answer me, Brian. I raced up the stairs. There was no sign of Brian. I searched every room, every corner of the second floor. Brian and the judge had vanished. I ran back outside, jumped into Brian's car, and headed for help in the village. What is he, Dad? The, the judge. He's... The judge? He's up at the house. Brian followed him. Followed him? Up where? Stairs. But they've both disappeared. Can you get some of the men to come back with me? We have got to find Brian. I don't know. There's none but me who dare set foot within that place. Listen. The bell. Why? It couldn't ring. The rat chewed the rope clear through. I'm crazy to do it. But I can't leave you alone to face it. Come on. 
I'll go back up there with you. Rory, Alec, come with us and don't ask questions. And so you saw the judge? He disappeared from the portrait. And then we saw him standing at the top of the stairs. That's when Brian went up to follow him. We'd better approach cautiously. Peer in the windows first to see what's going on. I'm going in to find Brian. Oh, lad. Through the window. I can see it. Brian. Hurry up, man. Quick. Brian. Brian. I looked with horror and then covered my eyes. Brian was hanging by the neck from the bell rope, swinging in slow rhythm to the tolling of the bell. Before I passed out and everything went black, I caught a glimpse of the portrait. The judge was back, seated in the high back chair, as though he had never moved. I came to on the lawn with Andy standing over me. Uh, uh, are you all right, Lane? Uh, yes, but... Brian. Oh, Brian. Uh, he'll be all right, too. We got him down in time. The men have taken him to the pub. He's... He's alive? Indeed. A nasty scar he'll have on his neck, but he'll be all right. The doctor's with him now. Well, what are the men doing over there? Ending this once and for all. We're burning the place to the ground. It'll go up like a tinderbox. Aye. Judge, rat, and all. And if the grandson complains we burned down his house, so be it. We had to protect ourselves from the judge's house. That was the end of it for us. Brian recovered. And we finished our work back at his flat in Liverpool. But I can still remember watching the judge's house collapse into fiery ashes. And the small, furry figure that emerged from the inferno. Its eyes glistening in the light of the flames. Before it scampered off into the woods beyond. The bell will toll no more over the judge's house. No longer will the villagers of Salford have to live in fear and dread. We know the rat deserted the sinking ship, or fiery house, to be exact. But without the portrait and the bell and the house, he'll probably end up as just another homeless gutter rat. I'll be back shortly. Believers in witchcraft staunchly maintain that certain evil spirits the devil most notably, can survive for years, sometimes centuries, by taking on various other life forms. One way of living forever, I suppose. But I don't think I'd like it. I mean, what's the good of living forever if your friends can never recognize you? Our cast included Gordon Gould, Lloyd Batista, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.